بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محب اللہ وزیر ٹاپک فار ٹو ڈے از ایگزیلری لیمف نوٹس یو نو دا ایگزیلا کنٹینس دس از دا ایگزیلا اٹ کنٹینس دا ایگزیلری آرٹری اینڈ اٹس برانچز دا ایگزیلری وین اینڈ اٹ ٹائبوٹیریز دی کارز آف بریکل پلیکسس اینڈ اٹس برانچز and then it contains many scattered lymph nodes and also the fates present over here now these lymph nodes the axillary lymph nodes these are somewhat two and a half dozen in number that is somewhat 20 to 30 and they lies scattered embedded in the fates but they are being classified into different groups look one group lies along this anterior wall that is along the lateral border of pectoralis minor this is called as pectoral group or anterior group and look this is the posterior wall of the axilla and it is subscapularis muscle one group of left nodes lie over here this is called as the posterior group or subscapular group and one group lie over here along the axillary artery and over here is the axillary vein medial to the artery one group lies over here along the axillary vein and this group is called as lateral group or humeral group that is humerus a lateral group of axillary nerve nodes and then one group lies over here in the center of the axilla this group of nerve nodes this is called a central group of nerve nodes and then one group lies just at the apex of the axilla which is being called as apical group of nerve nodes okay now give your attention over here look look this is the medial wall and these nodes which you can see over here this is the anterior or pectoral group and then this group along the subscapularis this is the posterior or subscapular group and this group which lies along the axillary vein this is the lateral or humeral group and this group which lies in the center this is central group and those lying highest of all these are called as the apical group of axillary left nodes okay now this pectoral group or anterior group which lies along the lateral border of pectoralis minor this drains this drains most of the anterior surface of own half this own half of upper half of anterior side of the trunk from this area and mostly from the breast tissue mostly from the breast tissue is being drained into this anterior or pectoral group then this posterior group or subscapular group which lies along the subscapularis muscle this lymphatics drains mostly from the post shoulder region and from the posterior side of the trunk upper half of the trunk of its own side the other side is drained into the other posterior group from this shoulder region and from the posterior side of the upper half of the trunk of its own side is being drained into the posterior group of lymph nodes then i told you that one group of lymph node lie over here at the lateral part of the axilla along the axillary veins which is called as lateral group or humeral group of lymph nodes this humeral group it drains mostly from the upper limb from the upper limb the lymphatics are being drained ultimately into this lateral group of lymph nodes then what happens that in the center of the axilla one group lies which is called as 
central group of lymph nodes in the central axilla. Now, the efferent vessel from this anterior group, from this posterior group, and from this lateral group all drains into this central group of lymph nodes. Receive from the central group of lymph nodes and some lymphatic also from the breast tissue. Then, over here at the apex of the axilla, one group lies which is called as apical group of lymph nodes. This apical group of lymph node receives, it receives the lymphatics from this central group. The central group receives from all the other groups. And then the efferent vessel from the central group, it drains into the apical group. The apical group also receives the lymphatics which runs along the cephalic vein. You already know, over here is a big cephalic vein. Cephalic vein which ascends upward from the upper rim. So some lymphatics travel along the cephalic vein, I told you, which lies in this ductopectoral groove. So this apical group also receives the lymphatics from the lymphs which travel around the cephalic vein and also from this central group. Then what happens that from this apical group one lymphatic duct is being formed and this lymphatic duct on the left side it opens into the thoracic duct and then the thoracic duct it opens look over here look this is the subclavian vein and this is the jugular vein and this lymphatic duct then opens into this jugulo subclavian junction and the lymphatic is being ultimately being poured into the venous system left in this way left this duct lymphatic duct it opens into thoracic duct and thoracic duct opens into this Sub, so jugulo, subclavian junction while on the right side the, from the apical group the right lymphatic duct which is being formed it opens directly into the jugulo subclavian left jugulo subclavian vein junction that is into the venous system in this way ultimately the lymphatics is being drained into the venous system now note the point these axillary lymph nodes get enlarged in some diseases and the patient comes to you with the complaint that doctor I have been, I am suffering from a swelling over here. Commonly, commonly this lymphatic node enlargement is because of the small small wounds in liberal people or in children playing in dirty places the lymphatic infection goes from over here and over here the left node it fight around the bacteria and ultimately sometimes the, the lymphatic the left node by itself become disease and it becomes enlarged and painful so usually it is infective because of the some infection present over here at the upper limb or in this area or in the back area from which then it is being drained secondly the common disease in which these lymph nodes become enlarged that is the tuberculosis in tuberculosis also these lymph nodes get enlarged thirdly thirdly the in which the lymph node get enlarged is usually from the the cancer or ca breast which is being dead into the axillary lymph nodes these lymph nodes also get enlarged in ca breast now what happens that you will have to diagnose then that what the left node, the left node which is being enlarged, it is because of what? Then what you do, either you do an FNAC, fine needle inspiration, cytology, in which you put a needle into the left node and take tissue from the left node and then put it on the slide for microscopy or then you do the excision biopsy, that is you take out one left node, you excise the skin of the axilla and take out one left node to number one, diagnose whether it is simple infectory, whether it is tuberculous or whether it is malignant. If malignant, then the staging is also being done from the biopsy of this, the staging of the cancer is being also done 
from the left node. But note the point that line over here, look, note one point, over here, over here, over here is the lung thoracic nerve. And over here, nerve to the latissimus dorsi and thoracodorsal artery, thoracodorsal nerve, thoracodorsal artery. These are lying over here. So while you are taking biopsy for the left node, you must take care of the anatomy of these nerves. Must be clear your mind so that you may not injure these nerves. And in addition, the axillary vein also lies over here. And if you take left node from over here, you should take. So it means in the axilla, many structures are lying entangled over here, nerves, arteries and veins. That's why while taking biopsy, you should be careful not to injure any other structure. This is all about the axillary left node. Thank you.